Hello everyone. There are many induction hobs and cookers on the market. They are not new, but how do they work? And are they safe? These questions still bother many people. Now, let's give induction hob a close look. Here is a typical structure of an induction hob. At the bottom is a tray holding all the parts. Close to the tray are the electronic circuits. The small circuit to the front is for the induction hub controls. The big circuit board in the middle is power electronics. There is also a fan for cooling when it is getting hot inside. On top of the electronic poles, there are four inductors. At the topmost, it is the virtual ceramic glass top. This material is highly heat resistant. That means it will not pass the heat from the pan back to electronics inside the hub. Among all the parts, the inductors are the most important parts. They convert electricity into heat in the pan. Let's find out how the inductor converts electricity into heat. The inductor is actually a coil winding in a flat spiral way. When there is an electrical current going through the coil, it generates a magnetic field. The physics behind it is actually the Faraday's law. According to the equation, the inducing EMF is equal to the negative change rate of flux times the number of turns. In plain words, a changing magnetic field generates an electric current in a conductor. Here, the inductor is used to generate the changing magnetic field. The cooking pan itself is the conductor. As shown in the picture, when the pan is put in this changing magnetic field, the electrons in the pan will move in a swirling way and form closed loop currents. These currents look like eddies or whirlpools, so they are called eddy currents. These eddy currents will generate heat in the pan and make it hot. The animation you see now is in slow motion. However, the magnetic field is oscillating very fast in reality. It is in a matter of 20 to 30,000 Hz. We will talk about it later. Since the pan itself is part of the energy conversion, there are also some requirements to the pan. First, it has to be very good in conducting magnetic flux. This can enhance the energy conversion and avoid magnetic flux leakage. They have to be made of magnetic materials, which are strongly attracted to a magnet. Second, they have to be electrically conductive, so they can generate an eddy current inside. For these two reasons, induction hubs require special pans. Not all the pans on the market are compatible. You should pay attention to the label when you are buying a pan. The other main part of an induction hub is the power electronics board. Let's draw the circuit diagram of the power electronics. The circuit can be divided into three stages. The first stage is the rectifier stage. It comprises of four dynos as a bridge, which converts alternating current into direct current. The second stage is an LC filter. It filters the high frequency and smooths the current. The third stage is the inverter stage. Its main component is the insulated gate bipolar transistor, called IGBT. It operates as a controlled switch, which opens and closes with a very high frequency. With a faster switching signal, the IGBT makes the current in the inductor coil oscillating with a very high frequency, and so does the magnetic field on the inductor. In general, 
the circuit turns 50 Hz input power supply into 20 to 30,000 Hz oscillating current output onto the coil. Then the inductor converts the energy into heat in the pan thanks to Faraday's law. Certainly, there are pros and cons for induction hubs. First, they are more efficient. The estimated energy transfer efficiency is 85%, which is around 10% higher than normal electric hubs, and are far more efficient than gas hubs. Another advantage is easy to clean. Since the heating surface is actually the pan itself, so the hops almost can keep clean all the time. The third advantage is no hot surface. The glass top of induction hop is highly heat resistant. Its surface temperature won't go up too much and it remains safe all the time. The only point of disadvantage is special induction pans. Your old cooking pans cannot work anymore. You need to buy a new set of pans and they are more expensive. Since an induction hub creates strong electrical magnetic field, should we worry about the risk of EMF exposure? Induction pans can confine the magnetic flux inside the pan, and the leakage is fairly low. There is no strong research suggesting that the EMF from induction hubs can harm human health. However, regarding to health and safety, we should always be cautious. EMF can interfere pacemakers. Those who have pacemakers should avoid being close to induction hubs. Pregnant women are also better to avoid working with induction hubs for too long. No scientific proof, but better to be cautious. Electric magnetic field could possibly have some impact on delicate electronic devices. So, it's better to keep your expensive high precision electronics from being so close. Although any pans attracted to a magnet would work, we should always use pans designed for induction hub for better performance and safety. Electric magnetic fields fall with distance. It could be better if you keep a little bit further from the hub when you are cooking. Thank you for watching. I hope this video is helpful to you.